I want to move forward to audio soundbite number six. This is uh, this is Fran Townsend, and she worked in the Bush administration. She has a great reputation. She was, I think, in foreign foreign but as a forget exactly what her position was, but it was fairly high, fairly ranking, and she was on CBS this morning today with Nora O'Donnell, are talking about the FBI issuing a rebuttal to the Devin Nunes memo on the entire FBI investigation of the Trump-Russia collusion story. Now, there's even more on the FBI director threatening to quit. It apparently is dire. The uh, FBI director is said to resent having been chosen to be FBI director after Comey was fired. He said it's very disturbing for him to be chairman of the, 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 the uh, grand poo by the FBI while the institution is under assault like this from this memo. And that the White House is very disturbed that Chris Ray wants to quit. And it, it is being portrayed as a a very rocky circumstance at the White House right now. Fran Townsend, now she's an establishmentarian, by the way. Fran Townsend is a qualified ranking member of the swamp. You need to know this. Now, when I say she's highly reputed and respected, she is in the swamp. She's an establishmentarian. She ranks right up there with, uh, with she's got all the qualifications. So, Here's what she said about the release of the memo. My understanding from sources inside the FBI is that if the White House decides to release the Nunes memo, Director Ray is prepared to issue a rebuttal. And in fairness to the FBI, I mean, they feel under siege. This is the tearing down of a respected institution. Understand what this process is. I ran this unit in the Justice Department that got the FISA warrants. There's multiple internal reviews in the FBI. There's a legal review at the Justice Department. It goes to the Attorney General, or in this case, the deputy who reviews it. And then it goes to an independent federal judge who looks at it. No FISA warrant relies on a single piece of evidence. Right. So if the allegation from Chairman Nunes is that they relied solely on the Steele dossier, that's not possible. There's the rub. That's That really is the rub here. But no matter what these people say, Tearing down the institution by exposing inappropriate behavior? How is that tearing down the institution? How is that instead not helping to rebuild it? For God's sake, if the institution has been corrupted and has been used for the political purpose of, purposes of two things, advancing a particular presidential candidate while trying to harm the opponent, doesn't that need to be exposed? And doesn't that need to be cleaned out? Why in the world would anybody want to protect that? And the reason they want to protect it is because Donald Trump is the guy carrying the wrecking ball. You know what? If, if Chris Ray wants to quit, fine. Let Trump put one of his boys in there. I mean, you can't blame Trump for thinking that the FBI director for Obama had Obama's back. We know that Eric Holder, the attorney general, claimed that he was Obama's wingman. We know that these people acted for and on behalf of Obama when they were the department heads. And now we're being told Trump is, this is an example of what Trump doesn't know. He doesn't know that these people don't work for him. He doesn't know that they're not there to protect him. He doesn't know that. Well, somebody might want to tell Eric Holder because he was clearly there, not just to protect Obama, but to advance the Obama agenda. And it looks like Comey and McCabe and the rest of these people, the FBI, were hellbent on getting Hillary Clinton elected. It looks like they were also hellbent on denying Donald Trump. And if he did win, that they were hellbent on somehow creating circumstances for him to be tossed out of office. But this idea... So the allegation of Chairman Nunes is that they relied solely on the Steele dossier. That's not possible. It most certainly is possible. You cannot ignore the motive. The motive here clearly 
was to aid Hillary Clinton, to exonerate Hillary Clinton, which they did. One of these guys' wives was taking money from Terry McAuliffe seeking political office on her own. McCabe's wife. And then struck stroke. And people say, well, struck stroke was sent packing when Mueller found out about it. Yeah, all right, fine and dandy. But it doesn't deny what struck stroke was doing. And he had plenty of time to do it before he was sent packing. I just, I don't see a reason like these people are panicked. What I see is a bunch of people who don't want any of this to be known. And I fall back to the same old thing. How can a bunch of easily proven lies ruin the reputation of the FBI? If the Devin Nunes memo is incomplete, if it's factually wrong, if it's taken everything out of context, it'd be easy as hell to ruin Devin Nunes if he is so dead wrong about this. If they're lying, if they're making it up, if all of this is bogus, how can things like this end up harming the FBI when the FBI will be able to demonstrate for anybody and everybody how wrong Devin Nunes and his memo is, right? But for some reason, they don't want to do that. Here's Jeffrey Tubin. Last night on CNN, talking about the same subject, the Nunes memo and what it represents and how horrible it is that it might be released. What's going on here is that Fox and Friends and Fox News is setting the agenda, not just for the House Republicans, but for the President of the United States here. They're the ones who want this released. No one else thinks this is accurate. The, the Democrats in the House don't think it's accurate. The FBI doesn't think it's accurate. But because the right wing of the party wants to discredit uh, the, the investigation of Robert Mueller, the damage to national security is being done. This is without precedent in American history. Oh, come on, Jeffrey. <sighs> They're just jealous that Trump watches Fox and Friends and Fox News. They hate Fox News going in. They can't stand it. Fox News would have any agenda influence whatsoever. The damage to Nash. Hey, Jeffrey, you ever heard of a movie called The Post? The Post, Jeffrey. Oh, yeah, just out. In fact, it was up for some epidemic nominations. The Post. You know what it was about, Jeffrey? You may have forgotten. It was about Catherine Graham, Ben Bradley, and the New York Post, who came across some secrets about how the United States had lied about everything in the Vietnam War. And the Washington Post thought that it was required to publish those things, those facts. The Washington Post thought that it was required that the lying, stinking government be pointed out. There wasn't any fear of releasing the Pentagon Papers at the Washington Post. There wasn't any fear of any damage to any institution. No, 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 no. Quite the contrary. How do we damage the institution was the question. And then how can we somehow link Richard Nixon to it all was the secondary question. To call this unprecedented? When journalism's claim to fame in the modern era is the destruction of the presidency of Richard Nixon. You hold that up as a great moment in journalism's past, a great moment in American history. And now a little four-page memo that details how the FBI may have tried to railroad Donald Trump somehow simply cannot be allowed to be seen by anyone because it is so dangerous and so damaging and it's never been done. It's unprecedented in American history, really. 
It was called a Pentagon Papers, Jeffrey. Your mother might have worked on the story or been around when it was happening. Her name was Marlene Sanders, Jeffrey Tubin's mother. You remember her? It was Tubin's mom. NBC News, Washington. Anyway, I've taken a break. Just saw the clock. These people are so full of it, and they are afraid as well. And one other thing here about Fran Townsend and her, and her, her comment here. So if the allegation from Chairman Nunes is that they relied solely on the Steele dossier, that's not possible. Also, now it's not the Steele dossier. Is that, see, it was. It is the Steele dossier. That is undeniable. Now they're trying to move the goalposts and say, oh, no, 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 no. Steel dossier? No. There's other stuff in there, too. So now they're trying to, in in the in the uh, the moments before the memo's released, they're trying to de-emphasize the importance of the dossier. This is an advanced CYA operation is what this is. Is when she says here, if the allegation from Nunes is that they relied solely on the Steele dossier, that's not possible. Meaning, there's so much more. The dossier, that may not mean anything here. When the dossier is everything. You have to know how to hear the denizens of the swamp. You have to know the techniques they use to move the goalposts, to use misdirection plays, flea flickers, reverses and double reverses. By the time they finish with all, you're so confused, you don't remember what the thing was about to begin with. But none of that works on me. Okay, Meet the Press has uh, tweeted a statement from Paul Ryan on the GOP memo, what this is not is an indictment of the FBI, of the Department of Justice. It does not impugn the Mueller investigation or the Deputy Attorney General. That's Meet the Press quoting Paul Ryan. Sounds like Christopher Ray got no reason to quit. Everything's cool. We supposedly will find out soon. 